Here's a beginner's review of the Lot Max SC10 Shark V2. By the time I chose to purchase this printer, my 3D printing experience consisted of about one week of tinkering with the DaVinci Mini that a friend let me borrow. I found myself getting frustrated with the DaVinci Mini, but I was still excited to explore more about 3D printing. After comparing several printers, the features offered by the Lot Max Shark V2 won me over. After having used this printer for three weeks, I do understand why some reviewers claim that this was not a good printer for beginners. Let's just say that I learned a lot about 3D printers my first week. For any newcomer considering a 3D printer, it's crucial to understand that 3D printing is still much more complicated than 2D printing. You think you know this, but do you really? 3D printing is still very much in hobbyist and professional form. Anyone can buy a 2D printer, plug in a USB cable, and get great results. 3D printing typically requires you to learn about your printer, filaments, and the different things that can affect both. That said, as a beginner, I believe the Lot Max Shark V2 has a lot to offer, even for beginners. First, I'm going to show you what's in the box, then I'll cover the cons, the pros, and then a few tips and facts I wish I had known about and learned the hard way my first week of tinkering with this printer. In the box includes everything you need to learn about and work on your printer. This also includes the laser engraving kit, an actual manual, and of course the tool kit. The tool kit appears to include all the standard kind of tools that seem to come with most 3D printers. This includes a sharpened scraper, now these are pointy death tweezers. Be careful using these on a hot brass nozzle. You don't want to damage that tip. And of course this bag, you're going to use that the most. You got your Allen wrenches, standard wrench, screwdrivers. You even got your little safety laser goggles, which I don't know how good these are going to be. Some tie wraps, which I had to use that for something special. Your little cleaning thing, you stick that in a hot nozzle. That'll really help clean that up. Haven't even used these yet. Some spare parts. See? Spare parts. And a few other spare parts in there. So as the first con, I gotta honestly say I think it could be priced. When I bought this, that week all the 3D printer manufacturers were having coupons. Everything was on sale, so it was a good week to buy that week, and I did get this one at a discounted price because of the coupon that was available. But would I pay the full $500 for it? If I had, I would have to say I'd be a little disappointed. For one, at $500, despite considering the other features this thing offers, there's no auto leveling built in, so it's all manual. And I do understand. There are plenty of printers out there that cost more than this that also do not have auto leveling. But you got to keep in mind those printers are dual head printers. What does that mean? Well, this is a bicolor printer, right? We got two spools and two lines going down but to one head. So that means there's more waste. It can print dual color, but it is going to be more wasteful. Now, that's not a real concern for me. This is my first printer, so I figured let me splurge a little bit and in my mind, I was getting a $500 printer for a little bit less. But in hindsight, considering that the auto leveler function is really like a $15 or $20 attachment, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't come included with a $500 price tag. Now for the next con, it might have just been for me. There were two more of these Teflon tubes included in the box. But the problem is they were cut to that same short length. And that sounds great, Dave. What's wrong with that? Two replacement tubes in case something happens. But that's not what those were for. Those are actually meant to connect this extruder to here. This hose right here was not included. I had to buy this myself. So I had two short tubes that I could not use to connect this extruder to this head. And at a $500 price tag, that's kind of disappointing. Just to be honest, this Teflon tubing does not cost a whole lot at all. In fact, I, it was probably like 10 bucks what I bought this and I have plenty left over. But in the $500 printer I shouldn't have to buy more to get it to work. I was highly disappointed by that. Now I will say this, the benefit of having two extruders meant that while I waited for my other tubing to come in, it didn't mean I was down. 
I still got to use this one just fine. So I did get to experiment and play around with 3D printing using this one. I just couldn't do any bi-color printing, which was not too big of a deal for me. But still, bottom line is the fact that I had to buy this just so I could use something that was advertised and offered on the printer at $500 price tag. Come on, y'all. Another thing you need to know, I don't really consider this a con because it could depend on your use case scenario. But this is not one that you're really going to hook to your computer at all times. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a little SD card slot right here. This printer is pretty much designed with the idea that you'll slice your model, copy it to the SD card, and then walk over here to your printer, insert it into the slot, and then print using this touchpad menu. Now you can hook a USB cord from a computer to this. In fact, it even has the USB port right here. But it tells you that if you do choose to do that, and we do, they do not recommend that, that your computer cannot go to sleep. Like it must stay active and on. So this is not going to be like a network printer. It doesn't have that capability. It's not going to be something like you, you hit print and it sends the data from the slicer directly to the printer and then you can turn the computer off because your printer is going to print it. I don't understand that either. I, it's, it's almost like it has to continually read the data from the computer as opposed to storing it inside some sort of memory where it can print off of it there. Really, it's not a big hassle to me. But it was kind of a surprise. I didn't really expect that. All right, so for the final con, I wanted to point out, when you put this in the sensor, it lights up. It's like, okay, I have filament. Both extruders must have filament run through them and that light on for this thing to run. Even if you're not using the other extruder, if the light goes off on the other extruder, even though you're not using it, then it'll actually have a fault. Now it is an error that it'll kind of pause printing and go to a home position and let you know that the filament's out and you'll have to you know, put some filament in there. You don't have to run it all the way through. You just got to put it in to get that light on. Now with that in mind, let me tell you what my problem was early on. Underneath this little sensor box, I actually had to take this box off, and underneath it was a PCB. The problem was, even though it was in there, if the filament happened to come from a side angle, from one side or the other, it was just enough that the sensor wouldn't read. In order to fix that, I had to take this off, flip it upside down, unscrew the PCB, drill one of the holes for the screws that held the PCB in, and make it just slightly bigger, Enough that I could put one of those pieces of tie wrap that I cut off in it to kind of tilt the sensor in such a way that no matter which direction the filament comes in, it'll always read. That's a small thing, but it was a, kind of a bummer trying to figure that one out. All right, and now for my first pro. I love this screen. This screen is fantastic. It's a touch screen. And this is the main menu right here, and you have all kinds of options. You'll find out about it. You can hit the status. What I like most is the control. You can preheat it. Now, these are probably not unusual controls to have, but the fact that it's a touch screen is pretty awesome. Uh, you can move it. You can home it. Now, one thing I do like... Let's say you're printing something, and you can tell it's not hot enough. You can make live adjustments off this screen while it's printing. When it places the prime bead, you can kind of get an idea, is it hot enough for this new filament I just put on? Maybe it's not. Bump it up a couple degrees. Maybe you need to drop it down a couple degrees. Maybe you need to add more extrusion. You can actually increase the extrusion percentage right here in real time while you're printing. And I got to tell you, that's pretty awesome. Because as soon as I got this thing and I started printing, I bought all kinds of different filaments. And I've learned that some of these different filaments don't work so good. And so this screen has been helpful. I've been able to make on-the-fly adjustments to correct my prints. That's awesome. Also, right here, you got three points of contact, three wheels, two on one side, one on the other. That goes for the other side as well. Here's another favorite of mine. 
With that DaVinci Mini, I could never get prints to stick, no matter how much glue or masking tape I used. Check that out. That is awesome. It's magnetic. It bends easily to get your prints off. And it's also heated. I mean, dude, that's that right there made me so happy. They were also pretty proud of their fan design. Pretty unique. Pretty nice, I guess. All right, now for a couple tips and tricks that I wish I knew before I got this printer. First of all, LotMax has a YouTube channel. There's all kinds of tutorials and things that you'll want to do when you first get your printer. So while your printer's on the way, you can go ahead and be reading up on it and know what you're going to have to do. I didn't know none of that. I just saw a problem. I had to fight my way through it. It wasn't until after about a week that I found that they had a channel and I thought, oh my gosh. And every problem I had had was already addressed in the video. And, and apparently sometimes, some of these are common problems. The first one, for example, is this right here. This belt right here brings a table forward and backward. You'll need to tighten that down. It's not hard to do. There's some videos about it, but you basically got two Allen screws right here. You loosen them, you pull it back a little bit, tighten them. Don't overdo it, but you'll need to do that to keep that table from shifting uh, something else. I actually ended up doing the same thing over here. I believe it was here and here. You loosen that. Didn't take much. This was already fairly tight. But the other belt's the most important. But this one you might need to do. I did have a couple shifts after I tightened the other one. Some other bolts you'll probably need to tighten up is this right here. You got one of these feeds on both sides. And for me, this thing come loose and fell down. So I had to look at it and realize that there was a set screw on it. So you will need to tighten that set screw. Now keep this in mind when you tighten it. If you look at the top of that shaft that this gear goes around, it slides down on top of it, right? On top of this shaft, there's a flat part. That's where you want to put the set screw on. So if you find that yours is loose, which it probably will be because I ended up having to do both of them, what you'll want to do, use that to take pressure off of it. And when you do, you can move that thing around, especially if the set screw is not tight. And you move it around or use the controls to bring the flat part around where you need it. And then you can get it tightened up. You also want to just kind of maybe go by the other extruder to get an idea of how high or tall it should be. It basically, if it feeds good, it feeds good. And if it's not feeding good, you might have a problem here. I actually had one print I went to bed on and a halfway printed, and I'd come to find out that it had come loose during the night, and it stopped feeding the head. But the printer didn't know it because the sensor, the sensor right here was reading, because it was. It was going here, and it was going to here, but it just wasn't pulling it anymore. It actually made its way all the way to the head, but it just stopped pulling. Some of the other pros you can read about just by looking at the features. This thing claims to do up to, I think it said 150, what is that, millimeters a minute? I'm not sure what the measurement is. It seems to be like 60 is a standard and 90 is considered fast, and this one can do 135. So that's pretty good. Now, how good are your prints going to be at that speed? Well, let's just be honest, they're not going to be perfect. But I mostly bought this to really do tools. Uh, to make a bracket or, or something like that. When you're doing stuff like that, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? But if you are planning to do figurines or high detail stuff, then yeah, absolutely. 150 millimeters a minute ain't going to do it. You're going to have to print slower, but you have that option. Overall, I think this is a great printer. It was a tough week for me because I did not know what resources were available to me. I highly recommend you check out the LotMax channel if you do purchase this. When it's being shipped in the mail, just go ahead and get yourself ready. Watch their tutorials. Understand what you might have to do when you first unpack this thing so you're prepared and you're already taking care of problems like tightening the belt that you're going to need to do and maybe tightening the gears over here. Go ahead and check that first thing. You can walk into it knowing it and knowing what to expect. It won't be as bad. After you watch some Max videos, I recommend watching some other 3D printer videos especially about over-extrusion and under-extrusion. It will give you some ideas that by the time you get your printer, you already have some ideas of what to look for and how to fix those problems using this control panel right here. If you're new to 3D printing, I hope something in this video helped you out. 
I sure wish I knew a lot of this before I got mine so I could have got straight to the problem a lot quicker. Uh, overall, I think it's a good printer. I'm pretty happy with it. I think you'll be too.